Exodus chapter number 12 is where we're going to be at. And um, we're going to look at the only thing that matters. That's the thought today. The only thing that matters. Think about that. A lot of times people live with that philosophy of that there's one thing in life that matters. And they go for it. You know, and there's some people that they look for success as being that only thing that matters. There's some people that look to money as being that only thing that matters. Others, fame. There's some people that have a right or at least a um, better understanding of, of why we are here, why we've been given life and put on this earth. And, and they may see the only thing that matters as being another person. Uh, some look as religion as being the only thing that matters. But uh, we're going to look here in Exodus and uh, at a, um, a, an event that happened in the life of of the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, and that really brought them down to a single uh, place in uh, their lives where there was one thing that mattered above all else. And if they didn't get that right, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was failure, it was death for them, okay? So uh, in the Exodus, God had brought a series of plagues upon um, the Egyptians, okay? The people of Israel, uh, they were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. And uh, they went into Egypt freely. They went into Egypt, and, and it talks about this in the book of Genesis, because there was a great famine that was worldwide. And they were saved because there was one man who God prepared and put in Egypt before, and his name was what? Anybody know? Joseph, okay? And Joseph, he was brought into Egypt as a slave, but God moved him into the position of a grand vizier, okay? He was like second king, all right? There was the first king, and he was the second king underneath him. And uh, his whole family came, 75 people came into Egypt. And after about 400 years' time, there's about 2 million of them, Okay? And that family grew into a nation. And Egypt was to the Israelites like an, uh, an incubation, okay? And I mean, they just grew and grew and grew. And, uh, and so what happened is after a few hundred years, the king of uh, Egypt, the Pharaoh, he saw these uh, people, the Israelites, they're, they're living a great life. They are growing in number. They are living tax-free. They are a threat. And so he says, you know what? These people need to be slaves. And that's what they did. They put them to task as slaves. They uh, held them captive. And uh, they continued to grow and continued to grow. And then said, we're going to kill their, uh, their children. Anyone who, anyone who has a child that's a boy is going to be cast into the river to die, and a girl will be saved. But you know what? God said, no, that's not the plan. And uh, God uh, circumvented that, people that feared him, and they just continued to grow and continued to grow, and Moses came along, and then God says, it's time. Let my people go. And so he has gone through a series of plagues. There's been nine different plagues nine different judgments that have come upon uh, the people of Egypt and that the people of Israel were able to witness. And so there was water being turned into blood. That was Exodus chapter 7. There was frogs covering the whole land. And uh, Exodus chapter 8. And uh, millions of frogs. Frogs everywhere. Frogs in your pantry. Frogs in your bed. Frogs in the flower pot. Fro frogs everywhere. And uh, it, was, it was a horrible, uh, horrible thing. Diseased livestock, all the livestock dying. And uh, boils, people being uh, afflicted with painful boils. There was hail and fire, uh, and, you know, supernatural judgments coming. And people were uh, dying and people were suffering. And yet they were saying, this God is not real. 
And yet they were saying, this God, we will not submit to him. And the Pharaoh was saying that, and so were the people. There was locusts devouring any vegetation that was left. There was darkness upon all the land. And uh, all of these nine plagues that had came were one by one destroying the belief that the people of Israel had in the gods of the Egyptians. You know, Pharaoh, he said this statement to Moses. He said, who is the Lord that I should obey him? You know what? That was the, the attitude of many of the Israelites. Who is the Lord? We don't know who this is, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And, and so God is pouring out these judgments upon, uh, upon Egypt, but at the same time God is growing or at least showing uh, the people of Israel His might, His power, who He is, and His care for them, and that God, He is doing something for them to make them free. God, he had one by one destroyed the false gods of the Egyptians through these plagues. And he was showing that the one true God was all powerful. Egypt needed to receive the judgment. They were the captors of, Israel, uh, of the people of Israel. They were the ones who were uh, holding them uh, and keeping them from uh, going to where God wanted them to go. And uh, Israel needed to see the power of God over the false gods of Egypt because that's what they had come to know over the last 400 years. But Israel seeing these gods, these false gods of Egypt being destroyed was not enough to save them. Okay, think about that. Having these false gods of Egypt being uh, dismantled and their belief in them being dismantled was not enough to save them. You know, in, in application in, in our day and time, just having um, and knowing what is wrong with a particular religion or a particular way of thought, you know, just knowing that evolution is wrong or knowing that this false religion is wrong is not enough to save a person, okay? And uh, God, He is wanting us to come to a place of faith in Himself, in the Lord. And so, uh, it, let's look here in Exodus chapter 11, verse number 4. Exodus chapter 11, verse number 4. And we'll see this very last plague that God is going to bring. It's meant not only to bring Egypt to their knees, but to bring Israel to a place of faith. And so, Exodus chapter 11, verse number 4. And Moses said... Thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. And uh, now look at chapter 12, and verse number 12. Chapter 12, verse 12. He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. This final judgment that God would bring upon them was to show them truly who God was to show them that he had power over all the gods of Egypt, to show them that they needed to forsake Egypt and her false gods, showing them that they needed to now come unto God as their Savior. You notice we read, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. The people of Israel, they were in the land of Egypt. And so this last judgment would come upon all the people, both Israel and the Egyptians as well. And so they needed to have a covering. They needed to have protection. They needed to have something done to prevent this plague from coming into their house. This last plague was called the Passover. 
And so the Passover not only defeated Israel's enemy, but here it was establishing their faith in God. And so God is going to show the people of Israel what they must do. Exodus chapter 12, and look in verse number 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. It says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month sh uh, they shall take unto them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for a lamb, then let his, his, him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. And he talks about the lamb being without blemish. Uh, and the male of the first year, you shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. And he t says, you shall keep it up from the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and the upper posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh of that night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, bitter herbs. So here, he's talking about the lamb. He's talking about the provision, the safety. What is going to prevent them from being uh, under this final judgment that is going to come over Egypt in that night of the Passover? And so Israel is there, and they are preparing, and they are told beforehand as well as Egypt is told before and this is what is coming this is what is coming the uh in one night there will be a great cry in one night all the firstborn will die but god says take a lamb take a lamb and the lamb is what would stand or what would rather uh prevent uh this judgment from affecting your house from bringing death into uh your uh, your house and your family. And so their faith was needing to be established in what? The blood. It says in verse 7, they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and uh, upon the upper posts of the houses. The blood of what? The blood of a lamb. The blood of a spotless lamb. And God is giving them instruction of what they must do. And he's saying that uh, your uh, this is this is your uh, faith is in the blood, and that uh, the blood is what is going to prevent the destroyer from coming into your house. And so when the when midnight came, and that's that's what happened, it, it, and it, it, that the the death angel would come at midnight, and uh, that angel of God sent from God bringing death for sin. What really mattered? What really mattered to those people who were in their houses in Egypt? What mattered to uh, uh, the people, those Egyptians in their house? And what mattered to the people of Israel who were in their houses as they were there? We can only, you know, we, you know, we could su su uh, su suspect what uh, they were thinking, but uh, there's been songs written about this. There's been songs that people have uh, written trying to uh, help us to visualize and think about uh, what it would have been like as that, uh, that death angel was coming. Maybe the winds were blowing and howling, and maybe it was like a great storm. Uh, we don't know. Maybe it was a, a quiet and calm and still, uh, like, you know, just, just still as death. And, uh, but that, uh, the people in that house would begin to hear a cry, a cry, another cry coming uh, out. People wailing and crying because there were loved ones dying and there were people who, uh, who were being affected by uh, this plague and those who were dying. And the Bible says that there was not one house in Egypt of the Egyptians where there was not one dead. And so what really mattered to those people who were inside the house? It was that the blood was applied. The blood was applied. You know, uh, Israel, they, they had to leave 
the, the gods of Egypt. They had to uh, stop trusting in the gods of e the Egyptians and trusting in, uh, you know, what they could do and begin trusting in what God could do. They had to begin trusting in the God of Israel and begin trusting in His way. And uh, God's way was through the blood. That's what He said. To, that they should take the blood. Verse number 13, this is Exodus 12, verse number 13. He says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you uh, when I smite the land of Egypt. And so the people of God, they needed to believe in the Lord. They needed to trust in His way. And His way was through the blood. His way was through the blood. You know, they, uh, they could have uh, came to the realization that, uh, that God was real and that God, uh, that uh, He was mighty. And He was mightier than all the false gods of Egypt. And he was mightier than all the, you know, the, the sun god, and even mightier than Pharaoh. But unless they came personally, each house, each family, to the belief that God and what he says is true. And they took that animal, they took that lamb, and they took that lamb into their home. We read about that, how they should pick a lamb out of their flock that was without blemish. And that they should pick the best lamb. That's what it was. And that they should, they should take that lamb into their home for 14 days. And that they should uh, then, upon the 14th day, kill that lamb, collect its blood, and take that hyssop, that, that herb, that weed, and, and dip it in the blood and strike it upon the side posts uh, of that door. And they should go inside. And they should do as the Lord had said, they would not be protected. You know, for the people of Israel back then, they had to come to that place of trust in God. Trust in God. Allowing God to be God. Allowing God to tell them, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way of life, and do it. You know, the problem with many people today is they want God to tell them all the good things. Make me feel good, God. Make, you know, make me feel good and make me feel good about myself. But before God can ever make us feel good about ourselves, He's got to tell us the truth. And we have to come to the realization that, you know, we have a problem in this world and it's called sin. And sin affects everyone. A sin affected all the people of Israel, and that's why, why they were there. They were there in, in Egypt, and Egypt pictures the world, and God was wanting to bring them out. And all of the, all of the things in, in the Old Testament are for examples. They are for our understanding of this Christian life, of this life that we have now in Christ. But we see that uh, the, the people of God, they, they had to trust in, in what the Lord was saying. This had never happened before. There was never a Passover before. They had never been free for all these people. They had been slaves their whole lives. That's all they had ever known. And now they were supposed to kill a lamb, and take its blood, and strike it upon the post of the door, and get inside and... Do what God said because he was going to deliver them. What did it take to do that? Faith. Faith. They had to believe what God was saying was true. They had to believe for their life's sake. For their life's sake, this was right. You know, I, I could just imagine there was probably some who said, I, I don't believe it. I, take my best lamb and kill it. This is my only lamb. I'm not going to do that. What would happen? They perished. They perished. You know, the way of God, the way of God is something that we may not understand, but it's still right. It's still right. You know, the way of God is still through the blood. 
the way of God is still through the blood. And the Lord is trying to establish our faith in Him. You know, Jesus is our Passover. And uh, the, the Passover uh, is a picture of Jesus, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. They were to take a lamb without blemish and without spot. That pictures Jesus being uh, the spotless lamb of God without blemish. Uh, his life was perfect. He never sinned one time. And Jesus came as the lamb of God. John chapter 1, verse 29 John 1, 29 tells us this. And, and uh, you know, there is a uh, red thread of blood all throughout the Bible and uh, that shows us that redemption is by blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness for sins without blood. All the way from Genesis... To the book of Revelation, the blood is there. So uh, that, that's how and why we have salvation. It says, uh, John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, He is the Lamb of God that would come and take our sins away. He would take our place. He would cover us in His blood. And, uh, and that's why Jesus came. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7. Because here it, it shows the fulfillment of that Old Testament um, Passover. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says... Um, purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump even as you are unleavened for even Christ notice this for even Christ our Passover is sacri sacrificed for us Jesus Christ is our Passover he is our lamb he is the one who took our place and who covered us and protected us from death protected us from our sin and, and so we must be as the people of God were back then, we must be inside. We must be in Christ. We must have faith in what He has done. Look at 1 Peter 1, verse 18. 1 Peter 1, verse 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. It says, For as much as ye know ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. This is, you know, we're talking about hundreds of years after, even thousands of years after this event. And they understood you weren't redeemed by silver and gold. Uh, you weren't brought out of Egypt by paying money. You were brought out of Egypt by the blood. What brought you out of Egypt? The blood. What brought you out of sin? The blood. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The blood of Jesus Christ is, is what cleanses us from sin. Look at verse 21. Who by him do believe in God? You know, that's important to believe in God. In fact, I hear a lot of times people say, well, I believe in God. What we believe about God matters. Okay? Just believing that God is or that God exists is not enough. James said that the devils believe and tremble. Okay? The devils believe in God. Okay? The demons believe in God. They will one day bow the knee before Him. Okay, in submission unto God. But just believing in God, believing that He exists is not salvation. Okay? Uh, it, it is trusting what He has said. Believing in Him, in God, is trusting in His provision of salvation. That's what it's talking about. Who by Him to believe in God that raised Him up from the dead and gave Him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. That's what he's talking about. Israel had to come to the place of believing 
I've got to be in the house. And I've not only got to be in the house, but the blood has to be applied. And that, uh, that the, the blood that is shed is what is going to protect me. That that lamb pictures a punishment, a price that has been paid, and I need to trust this. I need to trust in the blood. Hebrews chapter 9. Turn back to Hebrews chapter 9. That's uh, before 1 Peter. Hebrews chapter 9. Verse number 27. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Okay? Once to die. It, it is appointed for every man. For the people of Israel, it was appointed that somebody's going to die. All right? Because the angel is, of death is coming, and there is going to be someone to die. But he said, if you will take a lamb that is without blemish and without spot, and you'll take that innocent lamb and kill it, and you'll apply the blood that I will pass over you. You see that God, he has said, the, the wages of sin is death. But God's way is a way of mercy. God's way is a way uh, of grace, and it's provided, and it's by the blood of His Lamb, God's precious Lamb. Verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Jesus is that wonderful Lamb who died for us. Verse number, uh, this is chapter 10 now. Look at verse number 10. Verse 10 says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And then verse 12, But this man, this is Jesus, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Jesus, he offered himself as that lamb of God for us. Thank God for that, that, that he took that place that only he could take. No one else, no one else could take that place for me. No one else could be that substitute for you and for me. Thank God, Jesus Christ, he came as a lamb. You know, one day he's going to return as a lion. Amen. <laughs> and uh, he, is the, uh, he is the judge of sin and he is the righteous king. But thank God that he is the lamb. Look, look at one more verse here. Romans chapter 3, verse number 25. It says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for remission, the remission of, remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. God set forth Jesus to be a propitiation. What does that mean? Jesus, he is the acceptable substitute for our sins. So let's, let's, let's think about this. Let's go back and think about the only thing that mattered. On that night that the death angel came, it did not matter if the people had a lamb. Okay, it did not matter if the people were inside the house. It did not matter if the people believed in the gods of Egypt or they didn't. It didn't, believe, it didn't matter how strong their faith was in the God of Israel. I mean, it didn't matter how, how much they believed in the God of Israel. The only thing that mattered was if they had shed the blood and the blood had been applied. That was the only thing that mattered when it came down to it. And what I see today is that many people who want to believe in God and want to follow God, they don't understand that salvation is not by anything that we do. And so you say, well, how do you, how do you know God? Do you, do you, how do you know Him as your Savior? Do you know that your sins are forgiven? Yes. How do you know that? Well, I, you know, I'm a good person. I, I believe in God. I uh, I go to church. I'm in the house, okay? I, uh, you know, I, I try to do what's right. I'm uh, following, you know, this, this path. I don't believe in 
these gods of tradition. I don't follow that way. I'm a Christian. I love the Bible. I love the hymns. I love these things. I go to church. All those things are great. But what really matters? Has the blood been applied? Has the blood been applied? And so all of those good things are great, but none of those things would protect. I mean, the people, they could say, well, I have, I have a lamb. Did you, is the lamb slain? Is the blood applied? No. You're not protected, right? Oh, I, 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 I'm in the house. Is the blood applied? If the blood's not applied, it doesn't matter. I don't believe in those gods of Egypt. I don't believe in, in that. I believe in the one true God. Is the blood applied? Do you see? The only thing that matters is the blood applied. Now, there's many things that matter in the Christian life, but I'm saying to you today, if the blood of Jesus Christ has not been applied to your heart by faith, and you're not in Christ by faith in what Jesus has done, in His finished work, all of those other things, they don't matter. Nothing else matters. Okay? I mean, you can, you can go to the church. You can be born at church. You could be in the nursery. You could, you know, live at church your whole life. And if the blood has never been applied, you'll still die and go to hell. <laughs> you need Jesus Christ to be your sacrifice, to be your Passover, to be the one who takes your place and to apply the blood by faith. Look at Romans 5, uh, chapter 3, verse 25 again. It says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Don't miss that. The propitiation is what God provided. Okay, God provided the adequate, full substitute of His Son. Jesus Christ, He lived a perfect life. Jesus Christ, he was the spotless lamb. He never sinned. He lived a, a perfect life. He was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus, he did the Father's will, and he went to the cross. But he did so for you, for me, for this whole world. But don't miss this. He's the propitiation, but we receive him by faith in his blood. Notice that? By faith in his blood. If you've never believed upon Jesus Christ, believing upon His work on the cross by faith in His blood, you've missed it. The only thing that matters is what He has done and that we would believe and apply what He has done by faith. This message is not meant to bring doubt into anybody's heart who is a believer. The message today is not meant to bring doubt uh, uh, not, not to bring doubt to any true believer, but if you are trusting in anything besides Jesus Christ and His shed blood, you ought to ask yourself, what am I trusting in? What am I trusting in? Because if it's anything other than the blood of Christ, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you're trusting in your works or you're trusting in being a good man or a good woman, uh, or, or a good person. It's not enough. The only thing that matters at this point is trusting Jesus Christ and what He has done. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes for invitation.